Hello everyone and welcome to the special program uh, for our coverage of Pope Francis' visit to Colombia and I have the joy to be with Cardinal Archbishop of Quebec, Gérald Cyprien Lacroix. Thanks for accepting this invitation. It's a joy to be with you Francis and all the viewers of Salt and Light across Canada. And uh, I uh, re uh, remind our viewers that you're also the Primate of Canada, but also a missionary in Colombia. And that's why we are uh, together today to talk about your experience and this uh, special uh, visit of the po of Pope Francis to Colombia. Can so can you situate us about your relationship with Colombia? Sure. Uh, to tell you the truth, I'd much rather be with the Pope today in Colombia than here in Quebec City. Uh, I wish I could have been, but no. Well, I was privileged to be a missionary in Colombia for nine years. The first time I went to Colombia, I was 25 years old. I had asked for a six-month leave from my work. Uh, I was a graphic designer in a print shop. And uh, that is where I discovered my vocation to the priesthood, where the Lord personally called me. And I came back and did the studies. And then I went to serve for over eight years uh, as a priest in Colombia, in southern Colombia, in the Archdiocese of Popayan. So uh, it's very special for me to see the Pope today in Colombia visiting that beautiful country. Mm -hmm. Can you tell us a little bit about your uh, experience? Because you, you are a member of the Institute of Pius X, and that's w with that institute that you were sent there. So what was your pastoral experience? Because you said that you were there for eight years as a priest. So can you tell us uh, how, how did it go? Well, uh, our institute, the Pius X Secular Institute, has been present in Colombia since 1968 when Pope Paul VI went for the International Eucharistic Congress in Bogota and the opening of the Medellin Conference of Selam. And so our institute decided to go work in, and serve the church in Colombia. And we started working in Popayan. And so we've always had members there. And uh, w that is why I landed there. Uh, I discovered so much from the Colombian people and learned so much. Their family values are so strong to see how they care for one another. And uh, they're people who love life, who love children, uh, who, despite of all the difficulties they've had over the past 50 years uh, with uh, drug uh, cartels and problems with uh, injustice, social upheaval and all of that, uh, a civil war over 50 years, the Colombian people are a beautiful people. I learned so much from them. They have taught me the love of life in so many ways. I'm very grateful. So when I was uh, sent as a missionary, once I became a priest, uh, the first three years I was pastor in a parish in the Andes Mountains. We had 85 villages. I was the only priest with three other persons who were lay people, and we formed a little team. and. Uh, it was rather remote area, no electricity, uh, um, two roads. telephone lines. Huh? Was there any roads? or Very, how? very few roads. We walked by foot or on the back of a mule or a horse oh, well, to get to our... Like Jesus. <laughs> you like Jesus, yeah, yeah. It was really quite an experience. I really enjoyed sharing my life with that community for three years. And then we came to the city, to Popayan, and I was uh, invited to uh, become a professor in the seminary to train priests. And also I continued working in evangelization, forming lay people and uh, preaching the Word of God, which I love to do very much. What would you, 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 talk, you talked about the, uh, the special uh, the, the Colombian people that you love so much. Uh, characteristic about that, uh, that people that maybe correspond uh, specifically with the gospel, how they, they, do they, they correspond? You, sp you spoke about family life. Is sure. there anything, anything about else? joy. Mm. A joyful people. They love to sing. I think they're all born with a guitar in their hands. <laughs> they love music. They love to sing. They love to gather. They love to celebrate. Those are very much uh, gospel values. They are also a people who help each other a lot. In the little villages where I was and where I visited, often they'd have mingas, 
A minga is when everybody gets together to clear a road or to clean a field or to build a, a school. People get together and help each other out. That is really beautiful, the solidarity. And the church, uh, what, uh, how do you, could you uh, describe for our viewers, how would you describe the, the church in Colombia? Well, the church has many different uh, faces in Colombia. The church in Bogota, which is a city of seven, eight million people, is very different from the church in very rural areas. Where you were. Yes, yes, it's very, very different. It's the same gospel, the same sacraments, but it, we live it in a different way. I know more the rural areas and small city than the big city, but uh, uh, I think I, I've seen the years I was there, and this continues, the desire for the church, for the bishops, the priests, to really help people grow in their faith. Colombian people are naturally very religious, baptized, most of them. But like us here in North America, they need to deepen that faith, have it rooted in, in the gospel, in the, in, the, in the beauty of the Christian faith and, and, and tradition. And so there's a lot of work of evangelization right now and catechesis, very, very important. Small communities are growing. There's a lot of different ways that people are being evangelized so that they will see the fullness of the gospel. So that's what, uh, that impresses me very much. I think they're ahead of us in North America. In Colombia, they're ahead of us in new ways of bringing the gospel to people. What, uh, there is uh, some um, exchange sometimes uh, in, in Quebec. We, ha we have a Colombian priest that, goes, that comes to Quebec uh, as missionaries, as we can say, the same way you were going to Colombia. How would you describe that, that particular relationship with the ISIS in Colombia? Well, you see, that's the church. We're a big family and we help each other out, not only in the small villages, but in the universal church. There was a time where in Quebec, for example, if you go back to 1950, we had 5,000 missionaries spread all over the world from Quebec, from the, the province of Quebec. Uh, today, it's not quite the case. Today, we are receiving missionaries. Why did we go to these churches in different countries in, in the Southern Hemisphere? Because they lacked priests and they lacked uh, uh, religious and consecrated men and women. So we went to share. Now we're the ones who are poorer and need their help, and they're coming to help us. It's just natural. What are your hopes, before we go into the specifics, what are your hopes for this beautiful visit, the historic visit of Pope Francis to Colombia? Yeah, because the last visit of a pope was Pope St. John Paul II, 1987, I think. Huh? Well, every papal visit is a pastoral visit. The pope is the shepherd of this uh, of all these faithful in Colombia, and he goes as a, 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 as a pastor, as a, as a missionary. He goes to confirm his brothers and sisters in the faith, everywhere he goes. We've seen, this is what now, maybe the 19th or 20th uh, papal visit outside of Italy in four and a half years. It's quite a bit, you know. Pope Francis, for an 80-year-old man, has been very active and, and, and been to many countries. So he comes to Colombia to, 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 to confirm his brothers and sisters in the faith, help them grow. He will certainly have message of hope. He knows very well that Colombia has been going through a process of, uh, of, uh, of peace, searching peace, reconciliation. Those are very much in tune with the gospel. He will preach the gospel and invite them to accept the Lord's mercy, the Lord's grace, to grow and to better build that country. It's a beautiful country, but like all of our countries, needs to open itself more to the, to, to the life that God offers us so that there'll be more justice, more light, more truth, more love, more respect for life. So I, I think that's what I'm hoping for. And I know that's what the Holy Father will deliver because everywhere he goes, that's what he delivers. You know, the message of the gospel. He's a witness of Christ on earth for us. You, you have been a, a, a high witness of uh, the life of Colombia for eight years, like we said previously. Um, what do you, what do you uh, expect from the people receiving the Holy Father? Uh, you talked about the, the, the joy and the, the enthusiasm. So what kind of, uh, uh, of welcome uh, do you think Pope Francis will receive? 
nothing less than enthusiastic. I've been reading the newspapers uh, on internet and on, the, on social media, everywhere. They will, the Pope will see, welcome Pope Francis. We're happy that you've come to our country. A lot of enthusiasm, but also I am sure that the Colombian people will listen very attentively, very carefully to what the Holy Father will say. He's only visiting four, four cities. Uh, four days, four cities. That's already quite a challenge. And in those cities, he's got a lot of events, not only the, the celebration of Holy Mass. He will meet with different groups, like he always does. He'll have surprises. We know the official program, but there'll be surprises. He will we'll find out that he went to visit this family or this particular uh, good works uh, with the poor. He always does that. He always outside, surprises. Uh, also outside the text, uh, outside speech. The, <laughs> always, always, yes. Because he's a man of prayer. He's a man who is connected to the Lord in prayer every morning in a very special way. And so he, he leaves space in his life for that. I'm sure he's well prepared, but also he will. And so people will listen to that. Uh, although he's going to four cities, he's coming to all of Colombia. And it's so easy today through television, radio, the newspapers, and so many other social media, internet, his message will come across not only to Colombia, but through all of Latin America, all of Spanish-speaking Latin America. So uh, we, we have experienced previous uh, uh, papal visit of Pope Francis in South America. I've been to Paraguay, I've been to uh, um, Ecuador, for example. Bolivia, uh, Bolivia. Mexico. <laughs> so this time, uh, Colombia, uh, do you expect something specific about this, uh, uh, this, this country in Colombia? You've, been, you've named a couple of cities, uh, Medellin, all those cities. Uh, you know the challenges that face the country and the church there. Uh, how... Uh, can you tell us a little bit more about those those specific challenges and how Pope Francis could be uh, uh, an, an answer, not not the answer, the answer of Jesus Christ, obviously, sure. but uh, uh, a way in the, in the right path? Sure. Well, you see, evidently, at this particular time in history, Colombia needs to continue working and striving for peace inside its country and justice. That's the process that's been been they've been working on for many, many years. There's some agreements that have been signed on paper. Things look good. Things always look good on paper, but we've got to transfer that into our lives. And that cannot happen without reconciliation. We just finished living, experiencing the year of mercy, a holy year of mercy, where we really turn to God to ask for healing, for reconciliation amongst ourselves and with other people. And so I wouldn't be surprised that the Holy Father mentioned that and invite people to reconciliation, to forgiveness, to healing in that country. But he will also invite them to conversion, invite them to a deeper relationship with Jesus Christ. He always does that. And he's pretty challenging. Inviting not only the faithful, lay faithful, but also the people in consecrated life, the priests, the bishops. He's very, very challenging to us bishops and cardinals, so that we will have a coherent life, so that we will witness to the, the true gospel. He will also, I am sure, continue to invite the government and the church to take good care of the poor. They're part of the richness of this country. And to take care of our common home, which is the earth. There are some very, very important issues regarding the poor in Colombia. Uh, some say that Colombia is a very rich country with a lot of poor people. That's not normal. Why is it that Colombia is so rich in natural re resources uh, and yet have so many poor people yet who do not have clean water, who do not have good housing, not enough good education? There's progress, but there needs to be more. I'm sure the Pope will encourage that. And also there are some very important environmental issues. Uh, Colombia needs to be up to date on that also. So the Holy Father will most probably invite the country and, and the people of that country to, to take care of that. We also know that there is a crisis at the, at the moment in the neighbor uh, country, Venezuela. Maybe the, the, we should expect some, uh, some uh, uh, words of peace for, for that yes. region. Yeah, well, we've seen recently the Pope has met 
with the bishops uh, and the Conference of Bishops of Venezuela, giving them, I'm sure, guidance and good counsel and listening to them to better understand the situation and, and inviting the brother bishops to, to accompany well the faithful and the country in, in their mission, you know. So I wouldn't be surprised that the Pope mentioned that or have good words for Venezuela. Uh, we see that you have uh, 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 Colombia in your heart, but your heart is also here in Canada. Uh, you're in the primate of Canada. Uh, what are your uh, hopes, let's say, from our church seeing that apostolic trip to Colombia? What should we be inspired here from that particular church? Well, I hope that when the, Fa the Holy Father is done with Colombia and a few other countries he's, uh, he's told us that he's visiting, I hope he'll come here. <laughs> It would really be uh, good for us also to receive our universal shepherd, the Holy Father, Pope Francis, to come speak to us and be with us. His witness speaks so loudly, uh, his presence, the way he is with people. And he does not only speak to us Catholics, he speaks to all Christians, and I would say even in a broader sense to all of humanity. I, I meet Muslim brothers and sisters, Jews, non-believers who admire this man for what he is, for who he is, for how he lives, and how he, pro he proclaims through his life, and of course his words and his teaching, the love of God and the love of humanity. So hopefully he will come someday. But in the meantime, like we always do when he goes to different countries, we'll get little pieces and, and, and few photos and a little bit of video footage in the media, but we can go on the Vatican website and read his talks, his homilies, uh, his remarks, and get a little deeper the message that he wants to portray to the Colombian people. And usually there's a lot of good stuff in that for us also. There's some inspiring words, uh, and uh, I'm looking forward to that. I suppose you know personally people there that are, that are waiting for his visit. Have you talked to them? Have you, did you have I a have. I have. Actually, they're rather surprised that I'm not going. <laughs> this is just not a, a, a time in the year where I can leave the Archdiocese. I am foremost the Archbishop of the Diocese of Quebec. And uh, right now, the two auxiliary bishops are in Rome for the uh, bishop's baby school, we call it, <laughs> because they were just ordained last December, and every year at this time of year, the new bishops go to Rome for about 10 days, and they have training and uh, a pilgrimage to Rome. So the two auxiliary bishops are there now, so I, I needed to stay home with my family here, my family of the archdiocese. And I'm sure the visit will go well even if I'm not there. <laughs> but I have been speaking, yes, and, and people are thrilled. Uh, many will watch on television, of course, because not all can go. Those who will, privilege, will be privileged enough to see the Holy Father uh, live will enjoy it also. But just the fact that he's coming to their country, even though they're in the most remote areas uh, uh, of the country, listening on the radio or looking and seeing him on television will, I am sure, touch the hearts of many people. Thank you very much for having been with us today. It's a joy. Enjoy the Pope's visit in Colombia. Thank you. I've been uh, talking with Cardinal Archbishop of Quebec, Gérald de Cyprien Lacroix, who was uh, himself a missionary in Colombia. I remind you that uh, Pope Francis arrived today in Colombia for this historical papal visit to this beautiful country of Latin America. Uh, this, he, during this trip, he will be visiting four cities uh, for a five-day visit. Tomorrow morning, the Holy Father will be meeting with several civic leaders and authority. Uh, after which he's going to go to the uh, Cathedral of Bogota and uh, where he is expected to greet people from the balcony of the Cardinal Palace. We have, have seen in this uh, episode <laughs> in different previous uh, visit of Pope Francis. Our uh, coverage of this papal journey to Colombia continues with a daily recap with our own uh, Deacon Pedro tomorrow at 5 p.m. Eastern and 2 p.m. Pacific. For more information, go to our webpage at saltandlighttv.org for this uh, special uh, coverage of Pope Francis' visit to Colombia.